What's going on, my PT peeps? My walking dead family and my fighters. I'm One Eye Bright, also known as PT. Don't know if I'm winking or blinking, but I'm definitely thinking about the Walking Dead Season 11, Episode 12 review, recap, things we caught, breakdown, all those things. But spoiler warning for all things Walking Dead. Now, season 11, Episode 12 is the midway point as we got 24 episodes in the final season of The Walking Dead. Can't believe it. Well, Season 11, Episode 12 to me was pretty good, but there were some moments that made you go, hmm, well, made me go, Hmm, we'll break that down in much more preliminary thoughts. Post your comments below. But the episode starts with Max, Stephanie. What's your name? Well, it's Max. Mercer's sister, Max. We get to see her point of view that she finds a radio in the dumpster, puts it back together, makes it work, and randomly connects with Eugene. But we get to see the dialogue from Max's perspective. She's talking with Eugene and you hear the voiceover work from Eugene and Max and her point of view and it's pretty cool. She's hiding the radio behind a periodic table by her bed. Reminds me of the Shawshank Redemption with the poster. There's a lot of callbacks and Easter eggs in this episode, but you see Mercer, her brother, Max and Mercer are brother and sister and you can see that she's caught. But Mercer is the one that heard the problem over the radio because Lance caught the person talking. It's a rogue transmission. So we're going to see that come back around again. We'll talk more about that in a couple seconds. But the fact that Mercer is looking out for his sister, he might have made a deal with Lance because he clearly says, you better hope that Lance didn't hear you on the radio and know it's you. But remember when Eugene's group was welcomed into the Commonwealth. Mercer says, welcome to the Commonwealth, and slides open the door, and the first person that greets them is Shira, that we thought was Stephanie, or Stephanie. Then we see later on, it all put two and two together, that Max was there, and she overheard this woman talking as Stephanie, and, you know, she asked the question, how did you not know, Eugene? How did you know that this person was not this person? You know, it's like one of those things where we were all thinking it, and the way Eugene eats the ice cream, he's like, oh, this is good. But we all thought and knew and you know had the idea that this was the real Stephanie. Well, there is no Stephanie. And it's kind of interesting to see Max's point of view and you get the new her side of it somewhat. We see that she is the assistant to Pamela Milton. It's pretty cool that Pamela Milton hates Sebastian as much as we do, right? Well, she dislikes her son because he's a boop. But ultimately we see that Max is there looking out for Pamela Milton. What is her angle? Was she just catching Eugene on the radio by accident? Is she part of the resistance? We still don't know, but they're getting a little more clear picture of Max. Pamela Milton wants to cut off her son with a line of credit from the bank. Lance comes in the room talking about Eugene and Alexandria, and then Max is shut out. So we still don't know the angle that Lance is playing 100% at this point. But Max is talking to Eugene and Eugene is distraught and upset. And, you know, it's kind of a lot to take in. He thought this was the person. Now this is the person. And he's like, well, the person in the orange armor that hates me is your brother. Are you Stephanie? Nope. I'm out of here. Well, Stephanie is Max and Mercer's mom. And it was kind of annoying that Max was so upset that Eugene wasn't okay with stuff. Like, yeah, you just left in a hurry. How about his side of it, right? Well, more on that at the end of the episode. But then we see... Pamela Milton, Lance, the Commonwealth, going to Alexandria. Finally, Pamela Milton is going to Alexandria. We knew this was going to happen from the comic, and Pamela Milton doesn't want to stretch her resources. She's got luggage. She's got flowers. She's got opulence. She's got all this extra crap, right? It's pretty hilarious. Like, this is a zombie apocalypse? I don't know. But she makes a great point talking about stretching her resources too thin, traveling too far away from home base, their empire. If you go too far, your empire could fall. And she's no dummy. More on that later. We get into Alexandria. The Commonwealth enters Alexandria and the representative is Aaron. Looking like comic Rick. So why not? Right. So ultimately we get to see Daryl is with them. So Daryl and Aaron represent Alexandria to talk to Pamela Milton and Lance. And he's sweating. He's like, oh man, Gotta make a good impression. We don't want to mess this up. And that's what it's all about. Pamela Milton rocking the equestrian outfit. It's just kind of funny. But Aaron is the right person for schmoozing and meeting and talking with Pamela Milton. Aaron shows Pamela Milton and Lance around. They talk about the architect of this place. There really wasn't one. But then he references Maggie as the architect. No, it's Reg. 
and Deanna. They built this, but more on that later. We get to see Mercer talking with Daryl, and I love the dialogue with Mercer. Mercer is definitely one of my new favorite characters. I mean, I like Lance too. He's got the Saul Goodman vibes, but Mercer is a character that I like. I wish he was on the show earlier, and hopefully he gets on the show. That'd be great. Deanna. Who's Deanna? Nice connection with Deanna and Pamela Milton. Of course they knew each other, right? That's what it's got to be to make the ends meet. But ultimately, Deanna and Pamela Milton knew each other from back in the day. Daryl talks about Deanna. It's pretty cool. It's a nice little connection there. Would have been cool if one of the Monroes were actually alive still. To talk with Pamela Milton about Alexandria and everything, but we can't have that because that doesn't make sense of The Walking Dead, right? We have Daryl representing Alexandria, talking about Deanna. She built all this, she brought them in, she did good, she was great, and it's cool to see that. And they want to paint this great picture like Alexandria is great. And as a breach, it looks like it's one walker that Daryl kills by stabbing him in the jaw. But again, there's little things like that to go, hmm. We see Aaron and Lance are like, great, we're gonna have this terrible impression. Pamela Milton's not going to want to do this. Aaron knows that they need the help from the Commonwealth and he doesn't want to mess it up. Pamela Milton's probably like, yeah, I don't know about this, right? Then we see Ezekiel getting blood work done and there's like barely any blood in that tube. But ultimately it's one of those things where like, ah oh, man, what are they doing here? But Tommy, and it's Tommy, not Tommy, how Ezekiel said it, is giving the news that Ezekiel's going to have surgery. Look at the tumor there, it's going to get removed and he should be fine. Jerry's like, what are you talking about? It's a just routine checkup. So Carol really pulled some strings. Tommy is going to do the surgery. And all of Ezekiel's debt is cleaned out. So he's going to be a new man whenever we see him again. Tommy's going to take care of it. I was thinking they're going to stretch this out a little bit more. But either way, Ezekiel's going to be good. Jerry's excited. And it's good to see like Jerry is happier than Ezekiel is. Well, Ezekiel's kind of in disbelief where he's like, Hmm, that ain't right. How did I move up the line so quickly? Then we see the feet. My wife noticed the pedicure. I noticed the old feet. Then we see the bad CGI. This is not Jekyll Island. It's CGI. It's just like, yeah, this looks off. Something about it looks off, like the bad CGI deer. I love the fan that was blowing Lance's hair. Like, oh, get a little wind in there. It's a little windy on the beach. But it's pretty cool. Oceanside, I think, would be one of the best communities to be a part of the water the boats the fishing but the representative is rachel not cindy which you know rachel has been representing the oceanside community for a while but cindy's the first person we met what well, kind of rachel too but where's cindy been i haven't seen her in a long long time either way it's cool to see oceanside finally rachel talks about the pact or the agreement she doesn't want to join the Commonwealth or have the Commonwealth be connected with them until Maggie reconnects with them. And Maggie says it's okay. So it all ties into Maggie and Maggie does not want their help. So we'll see where that goes. But Aaron and Lance are talking and it's not going well. Lance is pissed and Aaron doesn't care. Aaron's like, yeah, well, don't act like Alexandria is more important to you than to me. And it's great to have Aaron more of the story arc here. He's a good actor and it's a good character. But Lance is like, well, if it doesn't go well with Maggie, it's not gonna go well for you. We're on the same boat here. We need each other. So Lance, yet again, is pulling another person into his web. And Aaron's like, Ugh. yeah, it's pretty great. It was great dialogue, but we'll have to see what happens with Lance going forward, even though Lance is going to have a controlling aspect of Alexandria. Then we see that our group has to stop because someone's blocking the road and it's Maggie, and Elijah, and Diane, and Lydia. And the cart breaks down, the walkers are around, Daryl's not rocking the Commonwealth armor, even though he's part of the troopers. Pamela Milton gets out to see what's going down, and Maggie is fighting the walkers. She's holding onto a horse. Not sure what happened here, we don't really know, but either way, they're blocking the road and there's more and more walkers. Why are there so many walkers, by the way? Wouldn't you think the Whispers got rid of them or they used them and something happened with it? But either way, Maggie, well, the stunt double, as you can see, that's clearly not Lauren Cohan. It's a stunt double and it's pretty bad done there. But either way, Maggie kills the walker and then she gets pulled up by Daryl. And the sequence is like, pull me up, straight into a hug. And it's nice. And it's good to see everybody getting along, even though we saw at the end of 1109, six months later, they weren't. So what happens in this timeline and what happens between Maggie 
the Commonwealth, Pamela Milton, everybody. Diane leaves the group, goes to the Commonwealth, but will Lydia and Elijah? Well, Elijah was there with Maggie at the end of the six months, but Maggie's not trusting anybody. She doesn't want help from anybody. She doesn't even want help from Aaron or Daryl. The sequence here, time and time again, in the episode showed me that Maggie's like, I already ate, I don't need your food. My bag's broken, thanks for fixing it, but I don't need your help. Like, just get the help, Maggie. Aaron is your friend. Daryl is your friend. Just get the help from them. And I like the dialogue with Aaron when he was like, yeah, they got 50,000 people and 49.99 of them are pretty good. Let's kind of trust them. We need their help. Let's use this to get things better. And then, boop, Lance shows up. It's like, where's Waldo? Where's Lance? He's always popping up in all these spots. He says, hey, we got some extra rifles. Let's go out hunting. I was like, I guess so, right? And to me, the woods around here, the same spot with the Reapers, with the, with the Reaper in season 10C, and just they've used it more and more. Now, when I couldn't help but laugh when Pamela Milton and this hat like, as soon as I saw the hat and the rifle, I instantly thought of The Simpsons and Mr. Burns. Like, look at that right there. Mrs. Burns, definitely. Pamela Milton's got that same vibe. It's just comical. But either way, Pamela Milton goes out with Maggie. General Mercer, we don't need your help to tag along here. Maggie and Pamela Milton are going to talk. And this spot right here, we've seen it before used in filming. And I we saw that a lot. I just like, we, we saw these spots film. I don't know what it was. And I'm usually not bad with that. But it's just something rubbed me the wrong way with it. Pamela Milton and Maggie talk. Maggie's not buying it. Pamela Milton's selling it. But Maggie doesn't buy what she's selling. Ezekiel's cooking in what looks to be a shabby apartment. Carol comes and talks to Ezekiel. Carol wants to find out about Ezekiel's appointment the surgery, and Ezekiel is happy, right? He's got surgery. Yeah, life is great. But then Ezekiel's smart, and he knows that Carol did something, or potentially did something, or she knows something. And Carol's like, look, I don't want you to die. We got to play the game, and Pamela Milton will do the same thing. So let's get it done. And I'm glad Carol did, because I like Ezekiel. Pamela Milton and Maggie talk, and she references Deanna and Georgie. Where has this lady been? She's one and done in one episode, never to see again. But I find it interesting that she talks about Deanna, who Pamela Milton knows, and possibly Georgie, who she may know. The walkers come out of nowhere, they easily kill them. It just shows you that Maggie knows how to kill walkers, knows how to do things, but so does Pamela Milton. She's not just some leader that hides in the office, she gets stuff done too. And I think that's what it's highlighting here. And Maggie's like, hmm, okay, you know what you're doing. Then we see Eugene sitting by the water that I believe we saw previously when Ezekiel and Michonne kissed, but I could be wrong. We see a painter painting Eugene. What would you title this painting? The Sad Man? Ponytail? What would you call it? But Eugene is sitting there and he's sulking. Then Rosita comes and it's nice to see Rosita being a friend to Eugene, even though they get together in the comics, not here on the show. Eugene, Rosita talk. Rosita likes the Commonwealth and all that she's done there. Eugene's like, I hate this place. It broke my heart. And he says that Stephanie broke up with him. Not all the stuff with Lance. And Rosita's a good friend. And I kind of wish they talked about Abraham a little bit because they talked about back in the day when Eugene lied. But then we go to the hilltop and we see Maggie comes back with two or three quail or another bird. And Elijah's like, yeah, we haven't had this much food in weeks. So they're struggling. And they let us know they're struggling. And Lydia's struggling. And Diane is struggling, so she leaves. So Lydia goes to talk to Daryl. And she's like, well, how do I just leave this place, basically? How do you know when it's enough? How do you know what to do? Because you don't want to leave Maggie, but this place has to suck. They got no food. They got to deal with walkers, safety, security. They should be past this now in the zombie apocalypse, right? But again, there he is. Boop! Lance shows up. Where's Lance? And he says, hey, can we give out some supplies? We have a lot. Let's give it out, right? And Maggie's like, yeah, sure. I don't want to take your stuff. What does it come along with? Clarence is like, uh, how about you two? Hand this out. I don't know you guys. Just hand this stuff out. And I love the smile of Mercer with Herschel wearing the helmet. I guess Mercer's never going to wear that helmet, right? But they hand out the food, more apples, and Mercer and Daryl talk. And it's nice to see 
what could be maybe down the road. But Mercer asks the question, Is your friend always like doing this? Being in this, you know, dire situation here? Hilltop struggling. Daryl says, no, the Hilltop used to be a very special place. And it was. I mean, Glenn was buried there and it's Maggie's home. And Mercer says, well, they can't all be as lucky as Alexandria. And Daryl replies with, nah, they can't all be as lucky as the Commonwealth. Talk about, are you coming around? And well, the Commonwealth has helped out so far. They give him jobs, kept him safe. But Mercer's smart and he's like, look, and tells Daryl how it is. Don't get too comfortable. And again, I love Mercer and can't wait to see what's in store for that character. Then we see Ezekiel getting ready for surgery. And to me, it looks like Rick in the hospital bed. And yes, I know it's Ezekiel and different person, different character, different circumstances, no flowers, but just the way they shot it was like, yep, reminds me of Rick being in the bed. And it's kind of cool and I really hope to see Rick in the CRM bed recovering from surgery too. But Carol, Jerry, they're there for Ezekiel and it's nice. But they have some weird dialogue about pizza. Be like, pizza and this. And the nurse comes in and is like, you ain't have no pizza, cello. But then Ezekiel's like, pizza and pineapple, pineapple, pizza, don't make sense. Then they wheel Ezekiel away and tune in next week on General Hospital, on General Walking Dead. Will Ezekiel make it? He's got to, right? Then the symbolism with the lucky coin. To me, it was all about Lance trying to show Maggie that he's just like her. The coin was gold plated. It's fancy on the outside, but when you go down to it, it's a regular coin. I'm a regular person, just like you, Maggie. We can help each other. How about we work together? And I thought the dialogue was very interesting, talking about taking a boat from Oceanside up the coast to another settlement, another area. Now, is it a subtle hint that he knows about other settlements? like in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, you know, some way that way. They talk about the future and we'll have to see if it comes around to it. But then the walkers come around and it's like, oh my goodness, the walkers, walkers, walkers. There's two walkers there that they easily take out and they have rifles and all right, get the troops ready. So Maggie and her group go out. We see the walker rip down one of the ropes with the cans. Now we're stopping the walkers and evidently they're failing. Maggie kills a walker, Lydia kills a walker, Elijah kills a walker, Diane kills a walker. And a lot of people are interested in this outfit that Lydia is wearing for a future episode. But all these walkers are here and they're contained, but they're getting by in different aspects of the ropes. Diane kills a walker, like I said. And Diane is out because she's going to the Commonwealth at the end of the episode. Elijah is going to stay with Maggie. He kills a walker. And to me, it's like the dialogue and the slower story of the Commonwealth, the political story, and then kill some walkers. Let's have Mercer kill some walkers again. We need some action. Kills a walker, flips a walker, almost like unnecessarily, but either way, kills the walker pretty easily. And Mercer looks on, still walkers are coming and there's just too many of them. They're still getting kind of tied up in the ropes. Maggie looks on, you know, it, it's kind of a little action sequence that we need. We got to mix up the action with some dialogue because the Commonwealth story arc is kind of slow. The troopers come, Maggie kills a walker here. But what gets me is Mercer, Lydia, Diane, and Elijah are all next to the walkers. Look, to the left, Diane, Elijah, Mercer, Maggie, Lydia. The walkers are shot right there by the Commonwealth troopers. The Commonwealth troopers most likely would have hit our group. They're too close by friendly fire, ricochets, by accident, whatever. They're just way too close. Our group should not be by the firing squad. It doesn't make sense. It's an annoying thing that doesn't matter that much, but to me, it's like, come on, what's going on here? Is it the writing, the production? It happens enough in the episode, it makes you wonder like, hmm, did they put that much into this episode? But either way, the story is progressing. We see that Maggie and the Commonwealth are getting along. Diane and Lydia and everybody's had enough but they like Maggie and they don't want to let her down. But Maggie is being stubborn and she doesn't want help. So we'll see if it bites her in the butt later on. But she looks at the formation of the troopers. Daryl's called in by Mercer. Maggie sees Aaron, Lance, Pam and Melton talking to the troopers. Mercer's dialogue with Daryl is like, they're always watching, eyes are always on you. Maggie sees that, given the people's eyebrow. And Daryl gets in line and he's not rocking the armor, but he's a trooper. 
I think Maggie catches on and she's like, yeah, I don't know what's going on here. They killed all the walkers. I don't want to owe these people anything. So she says, look, I'm gonna pass on your offer. So, sorry. Palin Milton's like, may I ask why? Because nothing's for free and I don't want to owe you anything. Aaron's like, oh, man, this is gonna ruin Alexandria. Lance is like, crap. My plan is falling apart. And then we see Eugene knocking for Max. And I'm really glad they had the dialogue because Max is upset about Eugene being the way he goes in the alley. But Eugene brings her ice cream, pulling the lasagna thing with Princess in the episode prior, as people have to let you in if you're holding food for them. But either way, Eugene is let into the apartment to talk with Max. And I'm glad they worked it out. You could see at first, they're like, I don't know. You see Eugene looking at the radio parts and puts the ice cream down and they talk. And to me, it's like, I'm glad Max wasn't holding against Eugene for any longer than this episode because it's like Eugene's been through a lot. He was lied to. He didn't know who Max was or who was the real Stephanie. But if you notice the letters PDQ, that's pretty damn quick. That's a callback to me with Abraham when he was talking about the saviors, he took him out PDQ, pieces and puddles. And it's a nice callback to Abraham just love it because Eugene and Abraham would start to talk like each other, pick up some different lingo. But we see that Max is like, yeah, how did you not know that she wasn't me? Do you remember any of the dialogue we talked about? Then they talk about the novel and they were talking about, what did you write this? What's it about? And it was bonding them. And it was good because it's good to see that these two were made for each other. And it's kind of a nice thing. Eugene should hopefully end up having a girlfriend you know, it's just one of those things. Eugene's had it rough. A rocky road, that's for sure. And we'll have to see what happens with these two. Usually if you end up in a relationship, it's not good for one part or the other. But if you know some of the recent filming news, don't want to give too much away. Daryl gives Maggie some candy from Judith. Hug it out. Maggie's kind of hugging it out this episode. But we know that there's going to be conflict in a couple months. What happens with Maggie and Daryl in the Commonwealth, we don't know. It remains to be seen. But Maggie turns around and Diane's like, yep, I'm out of here. I'm taking these two guys with me. Doesn't matter who they are, they're out of there. Then we see Pamela Milton's packing up. Lance is like, hey, we don't have to give up on this just yet. Let's keep working it out. Pamela Milton knows that Lance wants to do this to run these things. The dialogue here is interesting. Are they related? How do they know each other? Do you know each other a long time? Are they just acquaintances? But either way, Lance is going to be running Alexandria. That's the only community that he gets. He fires two bullets straight into the air. So those bullets gotta come straight down. And it's just stuff like this. And I'm not nitpicking, it's just like bothering me. You're like, come on, maybe I'm nitpicking, I don't know. He takes out the walkers. He's got one shot left. Aaron comes behind to talk to Lance. What did Pamela and Milton say? How you doing? Um, aces or whatever. He's got one shot left, which was good because he has six shots in there. The walker keeps coming, coming, and coming, and walking towards him, directly towards him like that. Aaron's like, so what does that mean? Are we gonna be okay? You're gonna keep working with Alexandria? And the walker keeps coming towards him. And Lance doesn't care. Lance is like, yeah, things are gonna be great. We're gonna take things over. Or we're gonna do something. Like, you see, it's coming together for Lance. We're gonna bring more people from the Commonwealth to Alexandria. But then as you see, the walker's facing Lance right here. And it's like the walker's coming towards us. But then Lance fires his pistol and it's behind now. So is there perspective change? Is it editing mistakes or what happened here? But either way, Lance is going to help take control of Alexandria and make it better and get kind of his own community. So how's it gonna be? Can't wait to find out. Let me know your thoughts. Post your comments below. Stay safe. And as always, tell them Daryl. Yeah,